Good evening. My name is Darren Lapomi, a member of the faculty at the Department of Nanoengineering and Chemical Engineering program at UC San Diego. It is my pleasure to introduce Professor Ching W. Tong, the 2019 recipient of the Kyoto Prize in Advanced Science and Technology. So Professor Tong is currently a professor at the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology and an emeritus professor of chemical engineering at the University of Rochester. He was born in 1947 in British Hong Kong. He holds a BS in chemistry from the University of British Columbia and a PhD in physical chemistry from Cornell in 1975. He had a long and extraordinarily productive career at the Eastman Kodak Company between 1975 and 2006 and was at the University of Rochester from 2006 onward. He is the recipient, as we are celebrating here, of the Kyoto Prize in 2019. He is a member of the National Inventors Hall of Fame in 2018. He is the winner of the Wolf Prize in Chemistry in 2011. He was inducted into the National Academy of Engineering in 2006, and he has been a fellow of the American Physical Society since 1998 and was recently awarded a Lifetime Achievement Award from the University of Rochester. Professor Tong, congratulations and welcome to UC San Diego and the Kyoto Prize Symposium, and thanks so much for chatting with us. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. You had a remarkable career at Eastman Kodak. In the second half of the 20th century, there were large numbers of famous inventions made at places like Bell Labs, IBM, Xerox PARC, HP Labs, and of course, Eastman Kodak. These inventions really came from basic scientific discoveries. However, today you don't see this kind of productivity from industrial research labs, at least in the physical sciences. Much of the basic science seems to be outsourced to universities. Do industrial research labs still have a role to play in basic material science, or have we got the balance right between university labs and industry? What are your thoughts? Well, when I joined Eastman Kodak Company, um, at, which was in 1975, um, the, there were Xerox, Bell Lab, IBM, they all had uh, large research labs. And uh, our choice to either go into academics or go to the bigger research labs. Uh, in terms of research, the, you know, the, we thought that the, in particular, if you want to uh, be in the industry career the, with more application in mind, you would, uh, you know, go into the uh, uh, the premier the industrial research lab. So have both the prime and the fundamental the side by side. And the, the research lab I I, I joined at the time is three thousand people, and that uh, they have a chemistry department, there's a physics department. Uh, and there's also a photographic uh, the engineering department uh, and motion department and so on. So I happened to join the chemistry department. So you can see that, uh, that, that we, we do have, uh, you know, fundamental uh, research at the time. And then I was given the freedom to say, hey, you go and make uh, organic soda cells and do whatever you can. And there were no restrictions. And uh, so the discovery of all that uh, came out of that. Uh, today, I think the 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 situation is very different. And the, there's no Kodak Research Lab anymore. The Xerox Research Lab is probably disappearing uh, as well. And I don't know much about the IBM the, or the Bell, oh, there's no Bell Lab. <laughs> and so, 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 so I think that the, 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 in terms of our material research, the physical science research, the, rather than the electronic the software kind, of, uh, the development cycle seems to take much longer times. And the industry seems just don't have the, the, the time scale or the, 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 the patience to develop new materials. So that's being pushed to the, the industry the, in the in universities or the smaller startups, the, which is spin out from the universities. So I think there's a natural progression for certain part of the uh, certain sciences. But compared to the, the artificial intelligence, the, the Google, Type or the, the Microsoft. I mean, that branch of information, the, the, uh, the intense kind of uh, research. And I, I, I think this, they must have a very large the, the research lab the, in, in that sector there. All right. So, 
they may be the one replacing the IBM and the Kodak and, uh, and so on. So I wouldn't say that they, they, they because they, once the company is making money, they can say that we can invest in the, 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 the more basic research, and, and, you know, so like put, for instance, the quantum computing, the, the AI and, the, and so on, and Google and the Facebook, the level of Facebook, the Google's doing all that. So but, uh, I think it, uh, in some discipline, I think it's the right balance. The, the university is doing the, the fundamental share, uh, but also the, 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 I, I know that uh, maybe uh, your research office also like to do, ask you to do a, a translational kind of research in the university. <laughs> and uh, so I think uh, it, it, uh, here in Asia is uh, is even more true. I think uh, there's a, a lot of uh, universities that are I think, uh, uh, are the basis of many startups as well. I, yeah, I don't know whether I answer your question, so uh, that's my view. Yeah, that's great, and there are a lot of threads that we can uh, that we can follow there. So you're a chemist, and I'm a chemist, and I wouldn't trade my first language for anything. But sometimes I get jealous of my colleagues who are really good in physics, computer science, and electrical engineering. Uh, since your work is now perhaps most closely associated with the electronics industry, do you ever wish you had a different scientific first language, or would you choose chemistry again, knowing what you know now? Well, I, 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 I when I yeah, started the uh, uh, my undergraduate, I, I was debating whether I should go into physics and, or chemistry. So I end up doing physical chemistry. So it's uh, half and half. <laughs> and and I think uh, the, the physical chemistry it is a good boundary. The, you know, you step to the physics side, you can do the engineering. To, to the, the step to the chemistry side, you can do the material research. And uh, uh, but. Um, uh, I, 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 I don't think I would change the, the, what I the, the had in my education as a, chem, as a chemist, uh, but I, I, I tend to like the, more on the physical side. So I felt comfortable talking to the display the experts the, in the LCD field, and, uh, uh, and I, I know the language. Then I, uh, sometimes I even understand the circuit design and so on. And, uh, you just to learn from them, uh, and uh, uh, it, I think that you know. The, I wish I could be deeper in all this discipline, you know. But there's only so much a human mind can do, <laughs> and, uh, uh, and and uh, so so to, to keep the answer short, yes, I uh, I'm very proud to be a chemist, but I also like to be a physicist. <laughs> That's very self-affirming for, for me to hear, so I, I appreciate that. Uh, why did you move from Kodak to U of R? Uh, would you have stayed if Kodak's finances were better? Oh, that is a, a, a uh, agonizing decision that I made uh, at the time, uh, um, uh, because I, I was uh, uh, with Kodak uh, for 30 some years, 20, you know, 31 years. And um, uh, if the decision I made to leave is really based on, I, uh, not that I don't uh, like Kodak, I work very well with my colleagues, with, with the management. I was valued highly, and uh, I have a very small group, you know, maybe five people working with me, uh, but there's a huge group uh, in the engineering and other side of it. And uh, when I made a decision to leave, based on those, uh, I wanted to change. And I wanted to try something different. And I happened to know somebody the, in the U of R uh, who I work with and talk to you know, often. And uh, he encouraged me to give a try at uh, academics. And the other thing that I have not tried is uh, uh, to be working in the small startups. So I could have done either. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, I chose the academic side just to have a different taste and experience. And I, I think that is very, extremely rewarding. And the most uh, of it is that uh, you work with uh, much younger generations. You don't work with your colleague with your, your age and, uh, you know, and they, they seem like uh, there's a, 
the younger mind, uh, you can have more influence on them, you know, and uh, and, and and that is the the the, the, the satisfaction uh, in the in the academic side. But the writing research grant and all those boy, I wish I what to do is completely different. <laughs> <laughs> And, and then I enjoy, and then I, I compare to the industry where I don't have to, uh, I don't have enough uh, to uh, to worry about where the money coming from, and, and so on. That that's that, uh, uh, that's the side I don't like about academics. It's almost they like spend more time to write research proposal than doing research itself. Indeed, I can <laughs> identify. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> If you had to advise a young, enthusiastic engineer, say, coming out of a bachelor's degree program um, to make an impact in electronic materials science, what is the best place to do that? Industry or academia or a startup, or does it depend on the person? It really depends on the person. Uh, if you, you know, if uh, if you want to just uh, in the, uh, academics, I mean, academic uh, I would uh, I would advise my students if you want to go to academic, uh, you 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 have to deal with a a, uh, a period of time, particularly in the uh, in the first five six years where you have to go through your tenure. Right, so you have to prove yourself in that six at that time. But what if you are a late boomer? You make your discovery in the seventh year. <laughs> that would not come and towards your that tenure. <laughs> So I, I think you know you have to consider all that, uh, but uh, uh, but if you are uh, uh, really independent, uh, you are you are a, a good thinker and uh, you you you're able to write uh, a good paper, you know, get your point very clear, and uh, and also to, uh, enjoy teaching. Academic is a wonderful career. Uh, it's a it's a downside and good side. In the industry. Uh, if you join a big company like I did in Kodak, you almost uh, the, the, the thought that uh, you would be there for life. At least at the time I joined Kodak, mm -hmm. because there's a stability associated with it. But along the side here, the, it can also make you less uh, competitive because you're so satisfied with your job. <laughs> All right. But if you work in the startup, that, that you don't know whether your next paycheck coming from, so you have to work much harder. And uh, so, so my only experience I I, I lack was it uh, uh, you know the working in the style. So I I I I I'm pretty sure there's a lot of exciting moments there, and also uh, some sort of uh, really you know pressure cooking <laughs> pressure cooker moments. <laughs> that, uh, <laughs> uh, so I think it really depends on the the the. the but I think if uh, the engineer or the scientist who actually has a, a firm uh, understanding of the basics and to be able to connect that dots, I don't think that he has to worry about uh, uh, you know uh, getting a job in the right place. It's not in the right place to find another one in the in the in the in the next company. I mean, you just have to keep looking, you know. Yeah, that's great. Um, I have one. One last question. See, so you've worked or studied in three countries, two continents, and multiple geographic areas, uh, snow and sun and everything in between. <laughs> in what way does culture influence choices in scientific research? And you can take that question along any dimension you'd like, fundamental versus applied, science engineering, or some other axis. Well, um... Did, uh, it did being uh, in the, like you said, in three continents, multiple countries, and uh, all in cold weather. Actually, I like cold weather better than hot weather. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I enjoy my five years in uh, Africa working with the uh, Indy outbreak, um, who's the, uh, just a great advisor. Um, and uh, I, I think um, what I, uh, by the way, I think uh, you, you, you know that my, my wife is the, uh, uh, non Chinese. Uh, she's Jewish. Mm -hmm. And so I learned that part of the culture as well. So I, I think that being uh, with uh, different uh, uh, the kind of the group of people, the Asians, Americans, black and white, yellow, and, and give you a very good perspective 
that this is a very diverse world, just like in science. It's extremely diverse, you know, beautiful, and also very complicated. <laughs> and human nature is very complicated, and science is very complicated. So I think as a human being, uh, we, we like to have the tools or have the ability to appreciate and to uh, uh, connect with all these the, the people and environments. And being in different place at different time of your life, it just gives you the amazing opportunity uh, to learn and to uh, be a better person, I guess. A wonderful note to end on. Uh, Professor Ching W. Tong, thank you so much for your time. Congratulations again on the Kyoto Prize. Thank you very much. It's very nice to talk with you. <laughs>